Project, so water leaks will not be a problem in the future. Uh, as uh, we did just get back from, from Washington, D.C., where uh, uh, we entertained thousands, thousands of guests and hundreds, hundreds of Cherokees at Cherokee Day at the, the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. Indian. Uh, the cherry uh, blossoms were in full bloom. bloom. And a good time was had by all, and the Eastern Band, the UKB, the Cherokee Nation all came together to help tell our story and share it uh, with a, a good number of people. The, we're in the process of restoring uh, the Capitol building of the Cherokee people, where they are stripping the old paint off of the, uh, uh, the brick. That was the only solution we had uh, uh, a decade ago to protect it, uh, but now they have the technology and we have the money to retuck the brick, uh, re-grout uh, the, the, the brick, so that 150 years from now, it will be there for our great-great-great-grandchildren uh, to enjoy and see what our ancestors did 150 years ago. Very proud of that project. Uh, this uh, week ago, Ten days, we had the uh, Public School Appreciation Day, and we were able to share over four million dollars with 107 school districts across the 14 counties. The, uh, also, we had a wonderful employee appreciation event uh, that fe featured not only the Pumpkin Holler Boys but uh, Stony Larue, uh, and a good time was had by all. Deputy and I were able to. Uh, share with the uh, Child Development Center uh, with their Learn and Grow Garden Project over in Stillwell. Uh, I think the kids are really going to have a good time uh, growing their vegetables and uh, uh, let's see, Fr Frankie joined us and Frankie joined us, okay, sorry. Uh, Tonight, we'd like to take a moment and I'd like to introduce you to some fine young Cherokees. And as I call their name, if they would please just stand, come forward right here. Uh, the first one would be Tennessee Loy from Tahlequah. These are going to be the participants in this year's Remember the Removal Ride. <coughs> Charles Flint, Tahlequah. Caleb Cox, Miami. Tanner Crow, Tahlequah. Ryder Weaver, Tahlequah. 
and Tristan Trumbula. Now, it's not all men that are going on this ride. <laughs> so if the girls would uh, just line up in front of them, Kayla Davis of Stillwell, Maggie McKinnis of Holbert, Alex Watt of Afton, Haley Sego of Claremore, Haley Cavanis of Tahlequah, and Shauna Harder of Tahlequah. Give them a big round of applause. And uh, the uh, director and leader and uh, uh, is Joseph Erb. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're doing. I want. Thank you guys for the fun. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're doing. And here we go. You're a brave man. <laughs> and I can tell you, Joseph uh, was on the ride. Let him buy it. Joseph was on the ride uh, last year, and I was so impressed that uh, even though going slower sometime is a lot more painful and a lot harder, uh, he was very diligent in leading the, bringing up the rear and encouraging those that were struggling that day to, uh, to, to go a little bit further, a little bit more. Uh, and if they had to stop, he would stop with them and then catch up later. Uh, but uh, I think I think the, the the young young people will be in great hands with Joseph. Uh, we have Cherokee Nation citizen uh, West No Fire, who is making his Showtime boxing debut on Saturday. Uh, April 18th at 7 p.m. on the uh, show Extreme Boxing Program. So if any of you are interested, uh, he will uh, be uh, uh, heavyweight uh, boxing that night. Uh, we come to the part of the program that uh, we, uh, we always take a little time out to, to recognize the Cherokees that were with us last month that are no longer with us this month, and we'll have a moment of silence when I finish. Uh, Homer Ar Arnold from Welch, Michael Bradshaw of Nowata, 
Ben Bunch of Stillwell, Janice Carter of Grove, Russell Carlisle of Tahlequah, Patsy Chandler of Skytook, William Downs of Sperry, Danielle Fortney of Muskogee, Ellis Foster of Stillwell, <coughs> Lillian Fuller of Salisaw, John Garner, Gardner of Sperry, Randy Hass of Pryor, Stephen Hummingbird of Tahlequah, Terry Johnson of Salisaw, Helen Mears of Salisaw, Patricia Moore of Salisaw, Bobby Mounts of Locust Grove, Nancy Robertson of Grove, Dolores Scott of Tahlequah, Kaysen Vincent of Pryor, Aline Todd Starr of Tulsa, Bernice Bush of Marble City, wife of former council member Sam Ed Bush. Are there others that we don't have? Janelle? Jimmy Sam Jackson of Salisaw. <clears throat> Gary Van of Stillwell. You have a Miss Riddle from Salisaw, 99 year old. Okay. Hosea Martin Benita. Roy Simmons, Black Gun Mountain. Really? Did not know that, sorry. Floyd Young, lived in No Water, and Blanche Robertson, longtime employee at Claremore Hospital. Claremore. We'll take a moment of silence, please. What do? Thank you, Chief. Uh, our next section will be the Cherokee Warrior Veterans Awards by Deputy Principal Chief S. Joe Crittenden. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Tonight we have three veterans to present the Warrior Award and Medal to for their service to this country. Our first veteran tonight is a gentleman named Donovan Duncan. Donovan, would you come forward? Let's give Donovan a hand, please. I'm going to read a little bit about you, sir. Just hold tight. Donovan Duncan of Stillwell joined the U.S. Marine Corps in 1997. He was deployed to Kuwait two times on peacekeeping missions. He served in Operation Stabilize as well as Operation Maritime Intercept while in the Marine Corps. Donovan received the many medals and awards including the Meritorious Unit Citation with a Bronze Star, Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, Humanitarian Service Medal, Sea Service Deployment Ribbon with one Bronze Star, and the Rifle Marksman Badge. Donovan served four years in the Marine Corps and was honorably discharged on June the 15th, 2001. Today he is married to Terry Duncan and they live in Stillwell. And Donovan, again, thank you for your service to this country. Our next veteran is Rusty Henson. Rusty, would you come forward, please? I'm 
want to read a little bit about Rusty here. Major Rusty D. Henson enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1993 where he attended infantry basic training at Fort Benning. He earned the distinguished honor graduate for his entire graduation class. After serving a few years in, as an enlisted soldier, he attended the officer candidate school at the Oklahoma Military Academy and graduated with honors. Earning his commission as a second lieutenant, he has held commander positions in Benita, Bartlesville, Guthrie, and Stillwater. He was deployed to Iraq in 20, 2007 and 8 as a senior base defense logistics officer at Camp Buk Buka. Is that Buka? Buka. Sounds right. I wasn't sure. Upon his return, Rusty served full-time as a Federal Army technician at the State Military Headquarters. He retired honorably in 2013. During his career, Rusty received these military honors, the Iraq Campaign Medal, 2X Army Commendation Medal, National Defense Service Medal with Bronze Star, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Army Achievement Medal, Iraq Campaign Star, Army Service Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M. Device, Good Conduct Medal, Long Service Medal, Overseas Training Ribbon, and the Meritorious Service Medal. Councilman Buzzard, I forgot to call you up, sir. Would you like to come up and help? I knew you was close. But Rusty, I want to thank you on behalf of the Cherokee Nation in this United States for your service to this country, sir. Thank you. I want to show my appreciation to everyone here tonight, our members of the uh, citizens of Cherokee Nation, tribal council members, thank you, um, Chief, Deputy Chief, Councilman Buzzard for uh, making me aware of this, and most of all, my family on the second row. Um, would you like, would you like to know? Uh, that would be great if it's okay. Yeah. Um, no, so, no soldier can do it without, or sailor or Marine, can do it without a, a supporting family. Last veteran this evening, and if uh, Councilman David Walkinstick would come up and help with this, Jay Silk. Jay, let's give Jay a hand. <laughs> Jay is an employee of the Cherokee Nation in the Indian Child Welfare Department. He entered the Navy in 1994, based at Everett Naval Station in Washington and served until 1997. He deployed with the USS Ingram and served active duty in both 94 and 97 in the Gulf. He continued his military career as a member of the reserves for six years. In 2010, he enlisted in the Army and served until he was medically discharged in 2013. He was on active duty from 2010 until 2011 in Afghanistan. He attained the rank of Sergeant in the US Army. He received the Afghanistan Campaign Medal with Campaign Star, Army Commendation Medal, Purple Heart, National Defense Service Medal, Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal, Southwest Asia Service Medal with Bronze Service Star, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Army Service Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M Device, U.S. Navy Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, Southwest Asia Service Medal, Second Award, Combat Action Badge and Marksmanship Badge. Jay, thank you, sir, for your service to this great country.
just an honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I see no unfinished business. That'll move us right on into uh, committee reports. Uh, our first report will be by uh, Gary Cooper, our director of the Housing Authority. I like y'all so much, I just can't stay away. Uh, Madam Speaker, members of the council, good evening. It's been just uh, a few short hours since we met before. I know it's been a very long day for you, so I'm going to keep it very, very short. Um, the regular Housing Authority board meeting for this month is um, uh, at the regular time, third Tuesday of this month, month, which is next Tuesday, the 21st, at 5.30 at our offices in Tahlequah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, as you'll remember, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we reinstituted uh, the college housing program. It's for Nahasta no eligible families. And I, I wanted to be sure to report, and, and I'm proud to report, that this spring semester we have 148 students who are receiving assistance, that's college students who's receiving assistance under that program. Um, we continue to follow and work towards seeing the HOSTA reauthorized. I uh, think it will be done this year. Uh, we see both the uh, uh, bill and uh, uh, passed out of the House um, with the strong bipartisan support. And then we also have a Senate bill that goes for, um, that is scheduled to go for markup uh, later on this month. So I think that's a, a very good thing. As it stands right now, if I had to guess, just best guess would be, you know, I would say maybe uh, mid-summer, maybe uh, before they go on their um, August recess that may make it out and make it over to the White House for the president's signature. Um, both of the bills have a lot of good things in them. They're uh, uh, very similar to one another, but there are some differences. I, I do want to be sure to report that both of them do, do include the um, uh, expansion of the HUD BASH program, uh, which is a veterans, uh, which is a veterans assistance program for uh, Native American uh, uh, veterans. Um, so that is something that we look very forward to um, to seeing and working with. Um, other than that, uh, we continue to work with negotiated rulemaking. Um, the other thing is uh, we continue to work with negotiated rulemaking to get um, uh, uh, that process finalized for the formula, and then uh, we will move on into uh, uh, probably uh, the other regs if uh, Nahasta gets reauthorized this year. Um, I do want to make sure to report that, you know, the Housing Authority continues to provide housing assistance, and we provide um, assistance to well over 6,000 families each and every month. Um, that is through a, a number of programs we have, included our, including our federally funded programs, managed housing programs, which are our apartments, and also uh, managed homes, which we've built in the past. Um, also our rental assistance <coughs> programs, our new home construction program, and also our community shield program you hear me talk about from time to time. That's a program we offer in conjunction with the uh, Amaran Risk Management Service, and that is for Nahost eligible families. And we provide, uh, just on that program alone, we provide 2,500, over 2,550 families with affordable homeowners insurance um, to low income eligible families that probably wouldn't be able to afford that homeowner's insurance any other way. And in order for them to get housing rehab assistance, they have to have insurance on their home. So it's kind of that catch-22, so we have those programs available to assist those. Um, as I promised, uh, I would try to keep it short. That concludes my report for this evening. As always, I'll try to answer questions that you may have. Are there any questions? Okay, yes. I'll I want to thank you and the Housing Authority for going forward with plans, and especially at Marble City, the first three houses have begun of the 13 house edition there, and that's really gonna help the school and help everyone, and it's really gonna be great. I'm proud. Well, thank you, Counselor. Uh, I'm well done. Thank you very much, and that's some property that we had, and, and um, we needed to build on it. I mean, we, it, it was just sitting there, and it's been sitting there for a while, and, and 
it was buildable and so that's one of the things that we wanted to uh to do so i think it'll be a, a great asset not only to the school district but to your county good report thank, thank you, you ma'am next report will be by our ceo of cherokee nation businesses sean slayton good evening council we we'll reporting on february and uh, we had a net income of 13 million dollars for the businesses at the end of february very good month that was a million nine above budget and a million six more than uh, last year so uh, business has been strong and, and continued to be strong in March. Uh, January, February, and March are usually our historically our, our biggest months, and then it kind of tapers off through the summer and comes back strong in the in the fall and uh, early winter. Uh, we also collected two hundred eighty thousand dollars and remitted that to the tax commission in additional taxes on uh, projects that we've got going. Uh, on the health clinics, the Redbird remodel is nearing completion. Uh, Oshalata, we hope to uh, turn over by the end of uh, the month. And Jay and Stillwell uh, by the end of May. So those are all in the final stages of wrapping up. And uh, I know everybody will be glad to see those open soon. Uh, down at Roland, I'm happy to report that on our casino that that is really moving along. I haven't been in it lately, but I'm um, told that it really looks good inside. So I think everybody's gonna be proud of that uh, final product. There are two job fairs that are coming up in April, one on the 18th and one on the 24th down there. And uh, my understanding is that they're gonna be held at the offsite warehouse and they can contact the HR department, employee services department there to get more details uh, of the times and the exact location for that. Um, our housing up at Siloam is making progress. They've got the, the gravel down for the roads, they've got the utilities in, the house pads are there and uh, we would have uh, been making more progress on that had the pads not been so wet the last couple of weeks. And uh, as soon as they dry out, they'll begin to uh, put the foundation in and, and get going there. Down at Roland, it's been a, a washout with uh, the uh, weather down there as well. So we'll get uh, to that just as soon as it dries out enough for construction to, to begin there. Um, on our employment numbers um, for the month, we're at 73.8 uh, for Cherokee on the businesses that we can practice a preference, um, 7.9 other Native American for a total of 81.7% Native American. And uh, that's my report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? <clears throat> Mr. Thornton. <clears throat> How are you doing, Mr. Slade? Doing good. Good. Uh, is there any way that you could probably get me a, a balance on the Redbird Clinic on the rehab and the uh, addition to knowing uh, how much revenue we own? Sure, I'll, I'll get with you tomorrow and, and uh, get, get exactly what you're looking for. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Mr. Lay. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Sean, the, the number of houses that you anticipate at each location, do you have any answer? Uh, yes, sir, and Mr. Garrett's here tonight, and he can probably give us a more e exact number if the speaker will let me <coughs> defer to him. Chuck, uh, why don't you come 29 on? 29 at West Siloam and 23 in Lowell. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Buzzer. Uh, those 29 at West Island Springs and at Roland. Yes, sir. Have we got occupants for those houses? I'll defer that to, uh, I'm not trying to dodge everybody tonight, but <laughs> I'll defer that to Gary because we're building them. They uh, go through their process to get the, select the occupants over at the Housing Authority. 
So I don't I don't know the answer to that. Is Jerry here? Sorry, right. We'll catch him later. But uh, I don't think we'll have any problem with West Island Springs because uh, I've heard housing is really really short. I've also heard that there's some excitement about us building out. I don't anticipate any problems with getting people in. Yeah, we we don't either, and, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to them being occupied. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. What? Yes. Yes, Mr. Lang. If I may, so CMB's building the houses. Mm -hmm. You're using Gary's list of people to mm -hmm. purchase and move in. Uh, is that what I'm here? Yeah, I think it goes through that process, whatever their the process is there. There's two lists that Gary has. One is if you own your property. And another list that has come up that if you don't own your property. So as I understand it, they're going to build 29 homes. They'll start through time and date of people that said that they wanted a house, but they did not own land. Now, all of them are not going to want to live in West Side on Springs. But the ones that do, it's first come, first serve, time and date on the list. Well, we've got Ramona. We've got South Coffeeville. We did. We've got Catoosa. And we will have another soon. So, And and quite honestly, the how many houses did you build at, at No Water? Uh, Eleven. Eleven, and it was done that very way first. <laughs> we built 11 homes there, time and date, of the people in that part of the, of the Cherokee Nation. It, as I understand it, Mr. Lay, they designate the area that they would like to get a house in if they don't have land. Yeah, they designate a county, and then we narrow it down by that way. For instance, um, West Salem. Yes. For instance, in West Salem, what we would do is because it's right there on the county line, we would merge the uh, the waiting list together for Adair and Delaware County, and we would work on. Uh, finding families to take those. And every application we, we collect is by date and then time of application so it's everyone's assigned a number. And that's how that's how it's placed on the waiting list. Um, so either they have land or they don't have land so we're able to, to track that. So we will take those take those uh, um, run a waiting list for folks who don't have land for Adair and Delaware County and ask them if they would be interested in those. And then either we find enough or we wouldn't find enough. I can tell you that we have uh, sent out about 144 letters uh, just to see what the interest is. So we do, we do a, a mass type mailing. Okay, other questions? Mr. Keener. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So C and B is the contract on these homes. Is that um, in, in a sense, we're using the same that we built the clinics with. Uh, Cherokee uh, Cheryl's group. So it's not in the Hosda funds. Or, okay. And well, this is it included uh, on the 1,400 person waiting list? Is that well, that will knock it down a little bit? Or that's not. That's separate. I, I don't know anything about that list. That's again deferring to Gary on that. Okay. Gary, I was asking about the 1,400 homes waiting list. Is that a part of that? knock that number down? I'm not exactly sure which waiting list you're referring to, but the waiting list we, we keep sure. for for all of the applications for our new construction program. Right. So it would be, we 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 classify families, but families who own land, families who right. don't own land. So it would be just those families who don't own land, and it's based on what county they specify. But that's included in the 1400. I'm guessing, I, I'm not looking at it. I, I, I can't really see that far to see which report it is, so I, I would hate to say yes it's, or no. It's New Construction Home Ownership Program, 1,411 waiting list, 177 homes built to date. And I'm, I'm guessing that that probably includes every application we have. Okay. We would separate those by ones who, <coughs> own land, ones who do not own land. So it would be those who do not own land are the ones we would offer. Uh, land to, for instance, 
And, and same and same way we we've, we've done uh, every house we've built yes. uh, in the past. And those are our new home construction program is not financed, has never been financed by the hospitals. And and C and B is the contractor for these homes by the casino or in West Salem and Rowland. It it ultimately rolls up to us, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. Mr. Thornton. Yes. Uh, then primarily what you're saying that uh, you have a list for people that own their own property. Yes. And are you building homes there? If, if they own their own property and they have, they have free and clear title. If it's not free and clear and there's something that needs to be cleaned up, we're working to clean that up. Like are this. there homes being processed for the people that own their own property. Yes. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, those are the those are the houses we, we build and process every day. And uh, this is primarily for people who don't own their own property. That's absolutely correct. They move well, I don't know whatever happened to the list. 2010, mm -hmm. I have a list now that had 5,000 people on that list. And I have no idea what happened to it. But in 2010, there was that many people I, I, I don't know what list you're referring to. Okay. I knew I mean, you would do If it. you have it, I'll, I'll have to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. But we, we took applications starting in 2012, and then there was like 120 maybe, I, I don't remember the exact number, of self-help yeah. list participants who had never received services. I can't remember that, but I still have the list. That's that's the only list that I'm aware of. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, it shouldn't be. Mike, just for the council's knowledge and information, um, there are 753 houses in the works, in some part of the process, and that includes all of the usable land for people that came in with land and now they're trying to work the list of people that didn't have land. And if you all will recall, several times during committee meetings, I have suggested to you, if you know of a suitable piece of land at a reasonable price, you need to see this gentleman because he's looking for land. We can't buy it <coughs> any higher than appraised price though. And that's why these people have come to us because they couldn't find any land either at a reasonable price. So we've got to try to find it as best we can. I think there was a suggestion today, talk to your city officials to see if they have some vacant lots that maybe they would be willing to work with the housing authority so that we could put some houses for their citizens as well as our citizens on those lots. Land is hard to find in, in smaller pieces and our citizens don't always like to live up close to each other. They're no different than any other uh, <coughs> any other citizen. They kind of like to be out by themselves at times, so land's kind of hard to find. Um, we need to all jump in and help as we can. But it appears from the list that we were given today that everything that every person that has come in with land is in some sort of the process for a house to be built and if you look at the end of that page over 750 some houses are already in play yeah yes madam speaker and if i mean for instance i, I know i mentioned it a couple of times in the past at committee meetings but if you or one of your constituents came in tomorrow to apply and they had land we would start processing that application immediately <coughs> there, there is no i mean they they still get assigned a number but Theoretically, there's no waiting list because we're processing those just as soon as we get them. I know, I know my citizens appreciate the program very much. And I appreciate you all giving a good report. Thank you. Okay, that moves us on to old business. And I see none pending. We're going to move right into new business. Miss Victoria, will you take that first one? Sure. Um, this is a resolution confirming the nomination of Eddie Morrison as an advisory committee member of Cherokee National Treasures Program, and I put that in the form of a motion. Okay. Second. We have a motion and second, and I believe Mr. Morrison, I did I see him come in? I didn't see him come in, but we, we, 
Okay, he was here at committee. Was we were allowed to uh, vet him at that point in time. Are there any other questions or comments regarding that nomination? All those in favor of this resolution can signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. That moves us down to uh, number two, which is out of executive and finance. Ms. Frankie, will you take that? This is a resolution authorizing Cherokee Nation Warehouse to donate surplus office equipment to Cherokee Nation Industries Employee Services Department. I put that in form of a motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah. We have a motion and second. Questions or comments about that resolution? That's under tab number two, came out of executive and finance. All those in favor can signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, believe the ayes have it. Ms. Frankie, I'll have you take number three also. This is a resolution authorizing the Cherokee Nation Health Program to donate an automated external defibrillator AED to Zion Public School located in Ader County, and I put that in form of a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. So, Okay, we have a motion and second on that resolution. Do I have questions or comments? All those in favor can signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Ms. Janice, will you take number four? This is number 15-039, an act amending legislative act 25-14, authorizing the comprehensive operating budget for fiscal year 2015, modification seven <coughs> and declaring an emergency, and I move for its approval. I will second that. Asking that it be done by acclamation. Okay. We have a motion and second and request by acclamation. Questions or comments? All those in favor then can signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. That budget mod will, I guess Miss Lacey, I don't know where she's at. There she is. She can go about her business now. All right. Those are the four items that we had as business items. All were thoroughly discussed, I believe, in committee. All have passed. Are there other announcements to be made? I have one short announcement. <coughs> I would like to commend the, the Cherokee Nation staff, uh, CMB, and that were at the uh, Cherokee Days in Washington, D.C. Uh, they really represented us well there. I bet we had close to 50 people there in the director of the museum, which is uh, Kevin Gogol, uh, came to us and said that that was the, the, the largest crowd that they have had that when the Cherokees come there and make it Cherokee Days. So we did this last year. We were invited back this year, and I think the numbers were even up. So I asked for some numbers on, you know, the, how, many, how many more came through the museum during the Cherokee Days. I also asked for the bottom number because the traffic count there was just unbelievable. Uh, Molly Jarvis, uh, Linda Taylor from Gift Shop and her staff, they were there three days and they, they really represent us well. Uh, then we had seven national treasures, including uh, Council Member Victoria here. And Councilman Baker was there and Councilor Coates was there, but it was just good representation from the three tribes. UKB, Eastern Band, Cherokee Nation, they're in D.C. for three days. We were really well represented there. So I just wanted to come in the staff from these groups here that were there and took care of the Cherokee Nation. Thank, Thank you, Madam you. Chair. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We'll see you again on May 11th. Thank you. Good job. Yeah.